The following stories are from members of Hanmam Church in South Korea. They aired on a Korean Christian TV network called C Channel and were dubbed in English. Hello, I'm Mi Sun Bae from Hanmam Church in Chuncheon. I used to hate my husband with a passion. Then I met the risen Jesus and came to submit to my husband, serving him as my Lord like Sarah did. I'd like to share my testimony with you. I was born in the distant town of Henam as the fourth of eight children. After finishing elementary school, I came to Seoul and went to middle school there. Then I worked in a factory as I attended a trade school. People often told me that I was smart and a good daughter. I went to church for the first time in fifth grade for a Christmas play. As a little girl, it felt so good to be at church, and I treasured the memory. I came to love the church. It was like a mother's bosom to me. After graduating from middle school, I went to a revival in Yoido. I loved it so much that I bought the books and LPs that they sold there. But my older sister was concerned about me being too into the church. She was living with me in Seoul at the time, and my father suddenly came up to see me from our hometown. In a firm voice, he said, Smart girls like you tend to fall too deep into religion. Promise me that you'll never go to church again. I was very scared of my father at the time, so I said yes. However, I still kept going to church secretly without my older sister knowing. I met my husband when I was 27 years old. I needed my future husband to meet certain requirements. He had to be a churchgoer, and he couldn't be an eldest son responsible for worshipping ancestors. I met my husband through an acquaintance. He was a second son, and though he wasn't a churchgoer, he promised me that he would attend church with me after we married. We dated for just five months before my pastor married us. Our families met each other at the home of my husband's brother before we married. Later on, the brother's wife told me that she had felt so badly for me at the time. That was because my husband had already been married once before, three years ago. But I only found out about that after I was pregnant with my first child. I not only experienced this, but many other incidents where I wanted to throw my husband in the trash during the first years of our marriage. I really wanted to leave him, but divorce was unthinkable in Korea in those times. I also didn't have the courage to get an abortion, so I wept the entire ten months I was carrying my baby. I ended up giving birth to a beautiful baby daughter, but she was born with a mental disability. My heart broke once again. It felt like it was my fault. Everything felt like it was my fault. That was because I had been so depressed, despairing, dark, and dejected during those ten months, always crying. I felt so guilty because it seemed like I had caused her to be born this way. My husband had promised that he would go to church with me after we got married, but he didn't keep that promise. You ever been to heaven? Show me one person who's been there. The Bible's nothing but a fairy tale, you idiot. All the church and the pastor ever do is trick simple-minded people into giving them money. You're a fool to fall for that stuff. My husband yelled and screamed as he burned and ripped my Bible. After my first child, I had three more children, each of them four years apart. My husband threatened our kids about going to church, too. They all remember how he beat our second child with a thin metal pipe for going to church. Once, he got violent when I secretly went to early morning prayer service while he was hospitalized. My husband didn't seem human to me. He was like an animal, and I even hated the feeling of his skin brushing against mine. I told myself that I had come into this family as a missionary, and I steeled myself to bear my calling. My eldest daughter was always a burden for me to carry. The kind of burden that God didn't ease even as I prayed and went to church under persecution. I spent my thirties and my forties telling myself things like, Don't cry. If you're weak, you fail. Don't wear black. If you're depressed, you lose. I hated my husband to the core of my bones, and every day I cried out to God, Why won't you take him away? I loved the church unconditionally, but at the same time I was terrified of going to hell if I stopped going to church. 
No matter how much my husband threatened me, I only felt relieved when I ended up at church through whatever means possible. Looking back, all I had done was go in and out of the church building, but I had believed that that was faith. I hadn't even once read the Bible. All I knew of the word was what I had heard from the pastor. Still, I believed in Emmanuel. I believed that God was with me. Then the Asian financial crisis hit us, and my husband was arrested for a debt of $20,000. I had to leave my youngest son at home by himself and work from dawn to dusk. After working for about three years in this way, the debt was somewhat paid off, but my husband was drinking over ten bottles of rice wine a day as he gradually lost his mind. He would hurt himself all over his body and run out of the house. My kids and I had to flee whenever he got violent. He became an alcoholic, and he was urinating and defecating in the bedroom. He ended up being admitted into an alcoholic's treatment center he couldn't be released from without his family's consent. He would go in and out of that center for the next 10 years. During the 34 years we had been married, I had done nothing but fight my husband over going to church and all I had left in me for him was rage. I thought that one day I would make him kneel before me for sure, that I would see him collapse before me. I hated him and cursed him in this way. I was angry that I had to submit to him even if I didn't want to, so I treated him like he was less than trash. I looked down on him, thinking that he and I were on different levels, that at least I had been educated in a middle school in Seoul. Our household was falling under harder and harder circumstances until it hit rock bottom. My spiritual state was also very bad. When I heard the passage, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household, I argued back to God, I do believe, but my family members aren't getting saved. I don't see any fruits. I always complained to God and blamed Him. I thought that I was a good Christian who wasn't getting any of her prayers answered or seeing any fruits of her labor for Christ. Then at some point, I began to wonder if I really was saved, and I grew scared at the thought that I might go to hell. My fifty years of living as a Christian was about to be swallowed up whole by the devil, when the manager of the rec center for the disabled, whom I had met through my daughter and was my spiritual mentor, sent me a video testimony. I watched it and was really surprised. One sister's testimony was titled, The Mentally Disabled Received the Gospel, and I watched it countless times, thinking of my eldest daughter. Every testimony I watched made me say, Wow, I was like that too. That's just like me. I was amazed and awed because they spoke of what was inside the inner depths of my heart. I thought that these testimony givers had great faith, but when all of them confessed that they had lived as the lords of themselves and broke down weeping, I wondered what they were talking about. Then I attended the retreat at church for the first time with the rec center manager. The pastor's sermon was very unfamiliar. When he said that the sin we had to repent was the sin of not believing in Jesus and that it was the root of all moral sins, I was really shocked. The fact that we were still in our sins if Christ has not been raised. The fact that this world was darkness and belonged to the evil one. I was hearing these things for the first time, and they were all really in the Bible. As I heard these things repeatedly, my dulled spiritual senses began to come alive little by little. I had heard the gospel of the resurrection at the point in my life where my future was bleak and my assurance of salvation was shaking. But I wondered why I was hearing about the resurrection so much when I already believed in the resurrection. My small church leader told me to think about who Jesus was, but I thought, what does that have to do with me? Jesus is God, and he died 2,000 years ago for our sins and rose again. The end. And that was it. And my relationship with him? I didn't really know. Then I asked myself, so then, what was I believing in all this time? I did believe that Jesus was God. I could just believe that. I thought that Jesus had done all of his miracles and even risen again because, of course, he was God. 
That was why the cross or the resurrection didn't move me at all. But then in Isaiah 9-6, the words, a child, struck me. A child? A little baby? Then he was a human being? Through this verse, I came to think that Jesus had been a real human being for sure. My small church leader helped me connect this verse with Acts 17.31. In the Old Testament, there were prophecies that God would come to this world as a human being, die so that our sins would be forgiven, and be raised again. Jesus came to this world as a child 2,000 years ago and died on a cross. How could we believe that he was the one prophesied about? The answer was the resurrection, the fact that he had risen from the dead. God had given the resurrection as proof for everyone to believe. Gradually, the resurrection became clear to me, and as I came to believe that Jesus was God through the resurrection, I began to see that I was a sinner. All this time, I had thought that I was doing everything right and that I was the sole victim, that my husband was the only bad person. I had treated him like an animal as I lashed out. Even though I had gone to church, I had been acting as God and lived however I wanted. I crumbled before God. God, I am a sinner. I had such a hard time because I didn't believe in Jesus and lived as my own Lord. I only called you Lord, Lord with my lips. I was an evildoer before you, Lord. I was someone you didn't know. My whole life... I fought with my husband so that I could go to church, but only now have I realized that it wasn't out of faith, but my own convictions. I was someone who had nothing to do with you, Lord. I murdered my husband in my heart countless times. I was a viper far worse than my husband. I have sinned so much. Lord, I repent. Please forgive the sinner. I receive the risen Jesus as the Lord of my heart. Jesus is my Lord and my God. Now I could understand why I'd heard about the resurrection so much, why the testimony givers had wept and confessed to living as their own lords. There really was nothing but the resurrection. I also understood that the resurrection let us see the cross for what it was. When I stood before the cross through the resurrection, I saw a love unlike any other. A love that didn't exist in this world. God had died for me when I deserved death. He had loved me this much. How could this be? After that, every word I read in the Bible pierced my heart. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. I had been a murderer. The words ought to especially pierced me. As someone who had received such a great love from Jesus, I ought to love my husband even till I lay down my life for him. I repented so much for not having loved him this way. On the day my husband was released from the treatment center once again, I heard something nice from him for the first time in my life. He said, people who can't quit drinking and keep coming back to the treatment center like I do, most of them have lost their wives and families, but you've always kept us whole. I'm really grateful for that. I don't swear and say bad things like I used to, right? I don't know why I swore and had such a bad temper back then. There was no reason for that. It was a miracle. My husband would never say a thing like that. He became gentle-spoken, too. At any rate, it felt good. It seemed like the Holy Spirit was touching my husband's heart now that I'd repented and come to God in the right way. But not long ago, my husband collapsed. He had been in the first stages of Alzheimer's caused by his alcoholism, and after surgeries on his hip and back, his speech and memory weren't what they used to be. I knelt before God, who did as he said he would, and repented. He had said, 
I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. I had been deceived by the devil as I cried out that I would make my husband kneel before me one day, that I would see him collapse before me. This curse I had laid upon him had come back to me as an irreversible regret. If I could turn back time, I would call my husband Lord and live in submission to him, like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. No matter what my husband does to me, I obey him because his words are the words of my Lord. My heart is filled with remorse as I watch my ailing husband, who can barely walk on his damaged knees. I ask him in tears to forgive me for wanting him to fall. Now what I hope and earnestly pray for is that, since Jesus rose again for my husband too, his spirit would hear the Lord and be saved. Now that I look back, the life I had lived with my husband had been a blink of an eye. When my spiritual eyes took on a new perspective, I could say amen to the fact that I was a kingly priest and a citizen of the heavenly kingdom. Jesus died with my old self in his arms, and I'm already born as a new creation. I say amen to the fact that Jesus lives in me right now. Amen. I say amen to all the words in the Bible. Amen. It is solely by the power of the gospel. Amen. My three children had grown up under such hard circumstances, but I don't worry about them anymore. That's because the gospel takes care of everything. I also give to the Lord my eldest daughter, who had always been a burden in my heart. She is His. I really want to let my children know this. Don't waste your life like your mother did, living as the Lord of yourselves. Your Lord is Jesus. Live with him as the true Lord in your heart. I earnestly hope that this testimony can be left as a treasured inheritance for my children. Amen. God called a sinner like me to show me his love, and through that love, he showed me on the cross. He let me submit to my husband and serve him. Jesus, I thank you. I will never forget this grace for as long as I live, and I will live as a missionary who shares this beautiful love of the Lord to other lost souls. Jesus, I love you. Thank you. If you'd like to see more stories about how the gospel changed lives, visit us at facebook.com slash HMU Only Jesus or Google us at HMU Only Jesus.